how are we handling highly active substances when we are dispensing them? When weighing active pharmaceutical ingredients, there is no way around an isolator. These active ingredients often have an OAL value less below than one microgram per meter cube. This is the concentration that results when you grind such a sugar cube into a very fine powder and finally distribute this in the volume of the Empire State Building. You can no longer see this concentration of dusts, but we are handling them. Isolators are the mechanical barrier between the operator weighing an ingredient and the dust cloud that is created during this weighing process. But it's not only the mechanical barrier that protects the operator. In addition, a constant negative pressure of one millibar or 100 pascal is maintained in the isolator. The isolator here in this film consists of the dispensing module with small quantities of weight and larger quantities of weight in the transfer module. When small quantities must be handled, the product enters the isolator via the so-called RTP ports. These are doors in the isolator wall that are actually just one half of a door. The other one is on the container, and only when these two doors are docked together and locked, they act as one door, and you can open this door from the inside of the isolator. Otherwise, those doors are hermetically sealed. Larger quantities can be handled, for example, via a so-called continuous liner system, to which a barrel can be docked. The barrels are then lifted with the lifting column to the height of the isolator docking and coupled to the liner system. This is done using the tried and tested back-in, back-out method. The outer liner is attached to the isolator housing with an O-ring, protecting the operator from direct contact with the contents of the drum. Now the inner liner containing the product can be pulled into the isolator and the product can be shoveled into the IBC. The IBC is coupled to the isolator with a split butterfly valve. These butterfly systems can control dust emissions well below 100 nanogram even per cubic meter. They are an industrial standard for dust-free filling and emptying of containers. We'll talk about this in a future episode. Here we can see how active half of the double flap is docked to the container at the isolator. On the container, the passive valve, which fits exactly like the palm of the hand, to the other half of the isolator. Both halves of those flaps are docked together, locked together, and now they work as one flap. Isolators are usually cleaned manually with cleaning nozzles that are operated with water or cleaning solution. The highly active dust in the isolator is bound and washed away. As the wastewater contains highly active product, this normally has to be disposed of specially. The drain on the isolator is coupled to the active valve on the discharge port. This whip drain is coupled on the split valve as in the same way as a passive valve, so that its connection also has the same high level of safety as when feeding a container. So here, too, emissions are controlled below 100 nanogram per meter cube. My point in this episode was to make you aware that highly active agents have to be transferred using isolators because the concentrations of the API has to be controlled to a very low level and we are dealing with the pure API. Next week I will describe the isolator technique. As always, if you have any questions, send me an email to focusing.containment at glad.com and I will try to answer your questions in one of the next sessions. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned.